Hi guys, I'm Amy Pekovic and I'm here with Fashion Industry Broadcast to interview Eva Galambos, who is the owner of Parlor X and we're going to sit down and go through her wardrobe. Eva, you've been in fashion for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. How would you say your style has evolved over those years to now? Well, I've always been quite experimental right from the very beginning, but probably not as experimental as I am today because I didn't have the confidence. Yeah. Okay. What are some of your favorite pieces in your closet at the moment? Um, would you like me to pull them out or just describe them? You could do both. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to show you this Junior Watanabe um, Ooh, piece. Wow. It is a jacket and a dress all in one. I oh, so it, it's yeah. Combined. It's combined. It's actually a runway piece. Yeah. Um, so it's actually Beautiful. quite exciting to own something that you then see paraded when you're in yes. Paris. But actually the interesting thing about this particular piece is that I don't wear it as the coat dress, I wear it just as a coat. So I would put this over the top of a really wow. simple outfit okay. and then just wear it casually as opposed to dressing it up in a really quirky way. Yeah. Okay. okay. So next piece. Next piece. Okay, so this just looks like a classic. really ordinary mm -hmm. classic overcoat, but it isn't. It's actually reversible. And oh. on the inside, it has really ornate details. Would you like me to open it and show you? Yes. Okay, so as you can see, here's the inside of the jacket. Oh, wow. And I'm going to turn that completely inside out. Ooh la la. And then what we have on the, on the inside out is the most beautiful coat. It actually looks almost like a Russian doll. Yes, it does. And it has the most incredible embroidery throughout. That is beautiful. It has a really beautiful puffy sleeve element. And yes. you can see all of the embroidery. And this is in fact what some might call vintage um, Comme des Garçons. Yeah. It's probably yeah. about 15 years old and um, one of my first greatest love pieces that I've oh, ever really? acquired. Um, I've actually sent this off to travelling exhibitions in fashion okay. exhibitions within Australia yep. um, because it was a very iconic piece at the time. But as I said, what makes it so incredible as well is that turn it the other way around and it just looks, it looks like, like a really elegant, coat. simple yep. trench coat and then you wear it this way around and if you wear it with something really beautiful and plain, then you can pick up all the full detail. Mm. Do you end up buying a lot of the pieces for yourself that you do buy for the stores? Um, I don't really think like that. Um, it's it, That's probably one of the most common asked questions. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense yeah. to ask that question because, you know, when, when you're not professionally buying, in your mind you're thinking, how can you differentiate between buying for your audience yeah. or buying for your um, clientele and buying for yourself? And I think over the years, maybe at the beginning, I was doing a little bit more of that because I was yeah. inexperienced, but over the years, I just don't think like that. I mm -hmm. very much buy for my clientele and yeah. every now and again, I'll see a collection that might be a little bit out there and I might think, oh, I don't know if everyone's going to love it, but mm -hmm. I know that I do. Yeah. So I might definitely think, okay, if no one loves that, I will definitely take <laughs> If no one myself. likes it, I like exactly. it. So <laughs> That's exactly right. So it, you know, it's not necessarily for myself, but mm -hmm. it's definitely um, for my audience, but I'm very happy to make it for myself. Yes. Oh, you've got to do it. Mm. Got to do it. Third piece. Third piece. Third. Okay. So, third piece is a bit of a tie, but I'm going to end up pulling out this Paco mm. Rabanne dress. Okay, wow. so Paco Rabanne is a brand that's really close to my heart for many, many reasons. Mm -hmm. I have bought it for Parlor X over many years on and off. It's changed design team again and again and yes. again. And in the last couple of years, the latest designer, he used to be a protege of Nicola Gestia from um, okay. what was Balenciaga, yeah. now is Louis Vuitton. And he's an absolute genius and he's recreated this brand. Mm -hmm. And today it's probably one, considered one of the coolest brands. And certainly oh, the runway collection is just extraordinary. There's always a standing ovation. Mm. He magically puts together futurism with a little bit of a bohemian head yeah. edge and very much, um, and very much with you know modern takes as well. Um, and it just creates the most beautiful yes. items that you can imagine. I haven't yet worn this and I cannot oh. wait to wear that. I'm okay. sure you have something. Yes, have <laughs> Some, yeah. Something's coming up very soon, I'm sure. Exactly, exactly. I can show you another, what my equal tie if you like. Ooh, I'll pull that sure. Mm, let's do it. Okay, so this is Chloe. 
I love them. Chloe is definitely one of my favourite brands yes. as well. Um, the level of um, craftsmanship, wow. the brand is probably one of the most luxurious brands mm -hmm. in the market just in terms of make and construction. This one here has really beautiful ornate details around the neck um, oh. and it has this incredible brocaded fabric as well. So we do love Chloe, but yes. you know, Chloe's very special. What, what sparked the love of fashion? Um, to understand Sydney, so I'm, yeah. I'm a Bondi girl. Um, I went to school in Edgecliff and I, you know, I, I, so I grew up locally. Mm -hmm. Paddington was, when I was a child, the be all and end all, end all and centre point for fashion. Yeah. All the best stores, the coolest stores, the most interesting brands all had fantastic presences in mm -hmm. Paddington. And on a Saturday, Paddington Markets represented yes. the cultural hub of Sydney. Yep. People came from the outskirts, but definitely all the local people congregated in Paddington. And back then, it, for me, when I was younger, it, it was kind of the end of the punk era. Yep. But there were still loads of punks strolling around uh, the markets. And I was, I, I was a really young teenager. I might have been um, 13 years old, yep. that young. I was in year seven and, you know, catching the bus and going and sitting on the grassy knoll and watching the people come to the markets and watching the skinheads and watching the punks. That to me just, you know, it sparked one of the greatest interests yeah. in um, the diversity that could be. And I definitely think that, um, you know, my, my interest in fashion and just how people presented themselves yep. and what that meant. I think that's where it all came from. I was going to say, is that why you chose your store to be in Paddington? Um, you know, I don't know whether the decision came from that, to be entirely yep. honest with you. Um, I was a fashion agent. I decided to change career paths um, towards my later part of my 20s. And okay. that's when I thought about possibly opening up a gallery style boutique um, that um, showcased the beautiful yep. brands that I was um, that I was representing. Um, and so, you know, when I thought of gallery, of course I thought of Paddington. Yeah. And I really wanted to go somewhere that was a little bit off the beaten track. So I wanted, mm -hmm. so, you know, Five Ways made a lot of sense because the Sherman galleries were yep. down there and, you know, um, and so many other little smaller galleries. And I thought, you know what? I want to do something that no one else has done mm -hmm. and the reason I called it a gallery style boutique was because I wanted to pretend uh, represent the type of fashion that didn't go in and out of fashion that st yeah. stood the test of time that would literally like, like an art piece exactly. in an art gallery yeah exactly so my love of art would then and my and my appreciation of art could then be transferred into fashion yeah. and I could present fashion in the same way that art would be presented and that's pretty much how it all came about yeah is there a reason the name the name Parlor X, mm. what's the story behind it? Well, the story behind that is really because the notion and concept of a parlor changed, mm -hmm. especially uh, pretty much during the French Revolution. So, you know, people weren't able to um, readily, they couldn't just go to a shop yeah. and buy fashion. It didn't work that way. They would have to go to salons and they'd have to go to parlors where their outfits would um, be recreated. Yes. So after the French Revolution, so after his great grandson um, kind of demised the whole monarchy mm -hmm. in France, um, the uh, a lot of women and a lot of the courtiers used to hide their men in the parlors, and then mm -hmm. eventually the concept of parlor became kind of like naughty and a bit like yeah, and what have you. And then you know parlor had this um, naughty connotation, but originally the parlors were where people used to get dressed. Yeah. So. You know, when I first started Parlor X, um, we did exist in an old Victorian um, terrace. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea of Parlor old world and touching yeah. the elements of the past. But then X felt very modern. Yes. X yes. is a woman and X smuts a spot and X felt very here and now. So I kind of wanted to blend the idea of the old and the new mm -hmm. and bring something that was quite different and, um, yeah. and unique. And in terms of, well, you've had Parlor X for 18 years, mm -hmm. where do you see it expanding? In the future, um, well, we've been on a trajectory with our online 
um, e-commerce yep. for many years now. And in fact, I think we do a relatively good job. And in mm. fact, I'm really proud to also say that we are the only um, bricks and mortar and e-commerce luxury multi-brand presence yep. in Australia. We're the only ones. Mm. So I, you know, I feel quite proud and happy to own that space. So my expansion is definitely with e-commerce. But I have to say bricks and mortar is still everything to me. And you know, my team are trained as stylists. They yeah. go in, they give word wardrobe advice. We've still got some of the same clients that have been shopping with us for say, 18 years. Wow. I'm actually not kidding. As a pioneer of international luxury fashion in Australia, how do you feel you can educate the Australian market? Um, that's a great question. I, you know, giving back is really important to me. What we created in Parlor X just under a year ago is what's called the Parlor X In Conversation Talk Series. So oh, every two months, okay. we invite all of our friends in the industry and a lot of our clients as well. And we put together a talk series where I'm the moderator mm -hmm. and we invite two to three other people who are very well-known members of our community yep. and industry. And we have various different topics of conversation. So I think coming up with a lot of thought-provoking um, you know, responses to what would be yeah. kind of questions. That's a way that you know I like to give back to the community. But I also, over the years, have helped a lot of Australian designers just go in and look at their collections yeah. and talk about the commercial viability of their collections, whether or not um, there's aspects of their collections that may need to make more commercial, yeah. or whether some. You know, also, it reminds me of you know when I do communicate, it reminds me. You know, oh yeah, that's right. I do have wisdom along those paths. Because yeah. Being me, um, you know, and I'm just a normal person. I forget what I know because yeah. I'm just going about doing my everyday. So it also, you know, makes me enjoy and remember and reflect on my own experience as well. Yeah. Wow. You're very inspiring. Oh, thank you. Very knowledgeable. <laughs> it's been amazing to talk. <laughs> no, we love that. I love it. Hi. My name is Eva Galambos and I'm the founder of Parlor X and you are watching Out of the Closet by Fashion Industry Broadcast. <laughs>